Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome back to another yes or no pick a card reading. It's cards numbers 1 to 5 and 6 to 10. Okay, card number 1. Awesome. 10 of vessels, which would be the 10 of cups, and this is happiness. Let's see if I can get the light on this a little better. <laughs> There you go, a rushing waterfall, waterfall <laughs> filling all of these 10 vessels or bowls or cups. This is like literally the river overflowing its banks with emotional and spiritual fulfillment. I pulled this card twice for myself this morning. Um, well, it wasn't really for me, it was from somebody I know who's in a bit of a shitty situation and they're worried about what the outcome was going to be, and they got this card twice. So if you're in a really bad place right now and you're thinking, nah, this couldn't possibly be my outcome, it really can. It really can. Like, it doesn't matter how <laughs> down in the dumps you're feeling or how impossible the obstacle seems or any of it because this card is coming through. I honestly wouldn't even worry about your yes or no with this. Don't think that too hard. Just think that this is your outcome, I think, for this situation, whatever it is. In the long run, once the dust settles, this is how you're going to be feeling. Ten of Cups, happiness, everything coming together perfectly in perfect cosmic timing. So <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Card number two. Nine of Arrows, Dedication. So this would normally, in a regular tarot, be the Nine of Swords. Um, as you guys, some of you probably know, the Nine of Swords is not a very great card to get. But this depiction of the Nine of Swords, I mean, first of all, it's not even swords. It's arrows. We have nine arrows flying at this person. And it really speaks to me of overcoming whatever is flying at you. So... I'm actually going to give you a yes on this one because that doesn't mean that this journey that you're on is going to be easy. It is actually going to take a lot of dedication on your part, a lot of perseverance, a lot of having to stand up on your own and face maybe criticism and even outright scorn from others, right? You feel like there's all these arrows flying at you. You feel attacked. You feel like you're really having to stand alone. This is really your moment where you have to face the universe and go within and find your own power. But I, this is, it, it's a little bit like a test, but don't get too hung up on that idea of the universe testing you. You don't have to prove your, that you're worthy or anything. It's not like that. But this is your moment where you kind of reach a certain stage of self-actualization, really. And you're going to see this through whatever it is, and it's going to work out. In the long run, it just doesn't feel that way right now. It doesn't feel easy. It doesn't feel pleasant. But be dedicated on this one, guys. See it through. Card number three. Three of stones, creativity. This is a yes. This is... This would be the three of pentacles. So there is an invitation here to work together with someone. This is co-creation. This is a group project. Um, so this might actually, even though this is a yes and this is a good card for some of you who are really independent and you're the kind of people who hate doing any kind of group projects, this might feel unpleasant for you. You're, you might be going, no, I, I want to go it alone or no, you know, I, I have to have it my own way or there's no way I want to deal with those people. You know, like if when I were in university, if I'd gotten this card and it had told me to like work on a group project, I would have been like, forget that, right? Like no way. <laughs> so to kind of keep that in mind here, just know that this is an invitation to be co-creative with others. And it might not be harmonious the whole way through, um, but that is... The direction you're being called to go in, to co-create, to work with others. Card number four. 
the blasted oak. Okay, so <laughs> welcome to your tower moment. This is this deck's version of the tower. This is a no, um, just to you know give you a vibe off of the card. But with the tower, <laughs> there's a lot more going on here than just a simple yes or no. Of course, if you're asking um, a relatively straightforward question, like should you go out for lunch, then I mean, this is telling you don't do that <laughs> for whatever reason, right? But um, for anybody asking a more complex question, just understand that this is your moment of chaos. This is the moment of the storm coming in. This this depiction, as you can see, it's not a tower crumbling. It is an oak being blasted by lightning, catching on fire and wreaking havoc. You know, the wind is blowing in the trees. The forest is getting really, uh, it's tumultuous. Everything is getting uprooted. Um, some trees are falling over. The animals are running scared, right? This is a chaos moment. This is a tower moment. Um, but just try to see through that. Just think of any storm you've ever been in, right? It rages through the night. You know, if, you know, maybe when you're a kid, you might've been afraid of storms, or at least if you're, if you're a person who loves storms, and then you're gonna, you might really thrive through this moment, actually, right? If you can really thrive through the chaos and just meet the challenge head on and ride the waves, then you're really gonna handle this really well. But even if, you know, you're a little bit afraid of the storm, just think about how, beautiful the next morning after a storm is right it's like the sky is clear the air is clear the air is fresh the sun is shining everybody comes outside to kind of you know sweep up all the pine needles and chase down the you know the pieces of their porch roof that flew off right and everybody starts cleaning up and after the storm it is always so much better and even if there's some damage to kind of clean up it's typically not as bad as you think because with this blasted oak card i don't see this as being a major like earthquake or hurricane type of storm or forest fire this is just a kind of a typical storm right the kind of storm that can really shake things up and can shake th some things loose but it doesn't actually it's not actually like a huge natural disaster that's that's really the vibe i get off this card it's kind of like the tower moment light so there you go <laughs> um weather the storm as best you can but remember that you know the dawn is coming Card number five. Ooh, Queen of Stones. This is the bear. Um, this is like a mama bear <laughs> kind of energy. This is a yes, and it is about being called to almost like stand. I just saw like a like a pillar of stone, you know, like being a pillar of strength for others around you. People might be really feeling really confused, feeling really upset, feeling really unsure about themselves or just how to proceed. People might even be panicking around you. And this is your moment to step up and be that pillar of strength to show them the way. Um, and even if you can't really do anything for them, you don't need to get sucked down into their chaos, into their panic, into their low vibes. It, even though, you know, misery loves company and they might want you to come down and panic with them and freak out with them. It will actually serve them better if you can sit in your strength, sit in your stability and calm nature and just kind of hold that energy for them in the long run, you know, and energetically that will serve them a lot more than you kind of spiraling down into the panic with them. So this is a good sign. This is a good energy and this is a yes, but there's, I feel like if you are being called to embody this bear energy, this bear magic that that's only because something around you might be lacking a certain amount of stability. So if you're looking for stability outside of yourself, you're not going to find it. Not when this card comes up. You are your own stability. You find your stability inside of yourself and you can also provide it for others. Card number six. Three of Vessels, Joy. This is a yes. This is coming together with your soul family. Um, and I was really actually just drawn to the three cups here, how they're so different. Even though all of these, I mean, they, are they are they cranes? I think they might be cranes. So we have three birds here, all of the same species at any rate. But look at their cups, three different kinds of cups. So there's something here about like diversity, um, multiculturalism, or just... You know, 
you know how families can be, you know, look really similar. Some families have a very strong family resemblance. My family's like that, actually. But each person in the family is is really deep down so different and has such different strengths and weaknesses. And I see that here. It is coming together with people who are working kind of on a, the same project as you or who want to build the same kind of family as you, but you're each contributing something entirely different. And that might... uh like bring in some tension sometimes. I'm reminded of like a husband and wife who just got, you know, or a couple that just get together and they're trying to build their home and they're arguing over the color of paint. So don't let your kind of surface level minuscule or what's the word? Like aesthetic. Like your don't let your tastes um really distract you, right? Kind of see past your superficial disagreements and focus on the joy of being together uh, in community. Card number seven. A five of arrows, frustration. So that's a no. This would be the five of swords, but this deck doesn't really translate perfectly. It's um, very wonderfully idiosyncratic. I, I really love it. So this five of arrows, um, as you can see, we have this person here. They've already shot four arrows at this mountain goat. They're trying, you know, to hunt the goat and they, they've missed every single time. So you might be feeling like you've been trying something over and over and over again, and you're just not succeeding and you can't figure out why. You know, maybe you are a very accomplished archer and you know you should be able to hit the bullseye, but you're just not. And you're starting to feel so frustrated. So the invitation here is to ask yourself, like, do you really need to kill this goat? Why are you trying to kill this goat? Maybe you, maybe you do. This is a personal thing, right? Maybe you do need to kill this goat because the people in this deck, um, it's all about the what the wildwood tarot. These people, um, you know, are from the ancient primordial forest. Those people really did need to hunt and to, you know, hunt animals to survive, right? They really truly did. So, you know, this person could very well be justified in hunting this goat. Uh, however, um, you know, if this is a person from the 21st century in the developed world, they might not be justified in hunting down a goat with a bow and arrow, right? Maybe that is something that's really unnecessary. And that is why the universe is kind of preventing it from happening. So, you know, take the goat metaphor as far as it runs for you, but just really think about what you're trying to accomplish and why. Why are you trying to do it? Is it really in your best interest? Is it really in your highest good? Is it in the highest good of any other people involved? Is it in the highest good of the collective? Is it truly resonant with your heart's desires? You might find that you're just trying to do something because you feel pressured to do it or be just because you're pressuring yourself to do it, not for really any good reasons. So, you know, there is something to be said for perseverance. Um, you know, if you really do have a good reason for doing this and it really is resonant for you, you know, you might need to find a different way of accomplishing that goal or you just might need to it might be one of those moments where you simply have to persevere, but if your reasons are not very aligned, you might need to put this project or whatever it is for you to rest. Card number eight. Page of Arrows, Ren. I feel like you guys are very nervous about something, um, might be feeling very small, like this adorable little bird, um, and think about how difficult it might, must be for this little bird to survive this frozen, snowy winter. You might be feeling small, surrounded by a very difficult and daunting situation. Um, be that as it may, um, I think this is a good sign. This card, I think this is a yes, um, but it's definitely a challenge. You're being called to face and overcome some kind of challenge. And I think you are being called to realize that you're nowhere near as small as you feel. You have so much more strength and resources and support available to you um, that you're maybe not appreciating or not seeing. You might really need to dig deep and find find your courage 
That's, that's from a movie somewhere, I think, that just, <laughs> that line just came to mind. You need to find your courage and realize that no matter how small you feel, you got this. You, you can do this. Just think of all of the little birds, like wrens, literally. I mean, you know, where I'm from anyway, wrens stay the whole winter and it'll snow and it'll get really cold and you wonder how do those tiny little birds survive? But, you know, they're resourceful and they're resilient and they do it. So, yeah, guys, just you're not as small as you feel. You can do this. Card number nine. Two of Cups, Attraction. Look at this, these two beings coming together. This can be external for you if you're asking about a person or any kind of external energy like a job or finances. This is, look at this, the alchemy. They're holding their hands together up here. There is this fiery heart coming down. And there is water literally pouring out of their hands into these two cups. This is two people coming together or two energies coming together, intertwining to create something greater than the sum of its parts. So this is a really wonderful sign. Um, you know, you'll know better than me if this is your relationship with your external world or if this is your internal relationship between two different aspects of yourself. But this, you know, with the subtext here of attraction, this is a coming together. Uh, it's kind of like a, like a gravity, <laughs> a gravity thing, right? Um, almost like, you know, two rivers. Imagine a valley, right? So there's mountains on either side of the valley and there's a stream of water running down each slope and eventually they unite in the river in the middle of the valley. So this is two things kind of being pulled together relentlessly and inevitable inevitably like by the force of gravity and just by the lay of the land so definitely expect things to be working out and coming together for you this is a yes if i didn't say that <laughs> card number 10 okay the wheel interesting that it's card number 10 and it's card number 10 <laughs> and um really really drawn into this red valve in the middle i don't know if any of you guys play half-life half-life 2 <laughs> but that was the first thing i thought of when i saw this so maybe that means something to somebody but for all of you who aren't video game nerds like myself um i honestly can't give you a yes or no for this one because this is the opposite is going to occur the wheel is turning. Everything is changing. Night is turning into day and day is turning into night. So if you're in a rather difficult place, things are going to get easier. If you're in a really easy place, expect for some kind of challenge or obstacle to come up. Don't need to worry about it. You don't need to stress about it. That's not what I mean to tell you, but just understand that, you know, the wheel is turning and things are shifting. So whatever is the opposite of what you've been experiencing is what's going to be coming in. Typically with the Wheel of Fortune, when you are in a bad place, it's great to see. And when you're in a good place, it's a little bit nerve wracking because that, you know, that means that you're at the top of the Ferris wheel and something is coming down. But this card is also, it's not the Wheel of Fortune. As you can see, it is the wheel. It is the wheel of the year, the wheel of the seasons. So Maybe think about it more that way. Literally, the season is shifting, you know, depending on where you are in the world. What kind of season are you moving into? Pay attention to the shifting of the actual uh, seasons of your local environment and notice actually how that affects your mood. You know, if you're coming into summer, it's going to be so uplifting and so exciting and so sunny. I mean, as long as you like summer, right? If you're going into winter, you know, watch out for that seasonal depression, right? Feeling down and low energy literally because you're not getting enough sunlight stuff like that um i don't know why that came up if anybody does have seasonal depression or just feels tired you don't even have to have seasonal depression right anybody who is tired or just kind of blase in the winter i really recommend trying a sad light you can get those for pretty cheap on amazon uh, I use them all winter. They're really great. They can actually really give you a boost when it is, you know, cloudy and dark and rainy for months on end. So yeah, guys, seasons are shifting. Um, can't give you a yes or a no for this one because the focus here is just on the shift. 
um, and understanding that it is a natural shift since it is a shifting with the season. This isn't, um, you know, if things have been going well for you and then something kind of a challenge comes up, it's not because you are being punished or it's not because karma or anything like that. It is literally just cycles moving. You know, when winter comes in, winter might be less pleasant for most areas of the planet, right? But it still serves its purpose. You still go into your hibernation. You still go into your state of waiting so that when everything starts to bloom and flourish again in the spring, it is that much more of a relief and that much more joyful. So the wheel is turning, guys. The wheel is turning. And I think that's all for this video. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.